Bert. Bert. Ah. Bert for president. Bert for president. Bert for president. Yeah, and maybe uh, Ernie could be his uh, vice president. Hillary is going to come at some point and presumably make a concession speech when it's mathematically impossible for her to win. But she'll be making it in a, I don't know if you can see from this angle, in a in illuminated map of America with a podium in the middle. That was where she was meant to stand as the new president-elect, as the first woman ever to hold this office. The glass ceiling here was no accident. That was the metaphor that she was supposed to have shattered. And of course, absolutely none of it has happened, and they really can't quite believe it. They thought early in the night they could knock Trump out by winning Florida. That would make it impossible, but they failed to do that. They then failed to win Ohio. Actually, they lost that by a lot. And Trump's Rust Belt strategy. And traditionally, Republicans have tried to win the presidency in the South, leaving the Rust Belt and the big industrial states of the North to the Democrats. Trump went the other way. He said, no, there were once Reagan Democrats, there can be Trump Democrats, I can win up there. And people, frankly, laughed at him, uh, but he did it. Uh, Wisconsin, a state that Hillary Clinton was so confident she was going to win, excuse me, that at no point in this entire campaign did she set foot in that state. Well, she lost it. Had she won it, she might have been president uh, tonight. But uh, that is the reality uh, the Democratic Party is going to have to live with. They've been beaten by a billionaire who lives in a penthouse who posed as an anti-establishment friend of the working class, and they were unable to resist that. She was unable to beat it. And, uh, well, the mood says it all. It is perfectly predictable. This has been happening all over the world, including in your country. It's happened in this country. For, for 10 years now, both political parties have tried to push through an amnesty. And both times, it wasn't one political party fighting another. It was the American people getting wind of it and shutting down the congressional switchboards. Apparently, humans around the globe like to have countries and like to live in their countries. Um, so I think it was predicted predictable. Um, that's why lots of us didn't predict it. But do you think it was more about jobs and Trump saying, look, I'm going to bring the jobs back to America to, to working class guys again? Was it about immigration? Was it about Islamic it's terrorism? Part, or was it all of it? It's all part of the same thing, which is globalism versus nationality. Um, I mean, part of the trade deals are very important. We've lost so, our, the number of manufacturing jobs have been halved in the last 20 years. People don't know in this beautiful city, they don't know in San Francisco or Washington or L.A., but go out to America and people who used to have great jobs and their kids could look forward to futures better than theirs. Now it's good for Wall Street because they get to arrange the international deals, but it's terrible for the people who work here and dumping millions of low-wage workers on the country. Look at how awful it's been for the African-American community in this country. Donald Trump is elected the president of the United States of America. He is the 45th president of the United States, and this is a seismic political earthquake that will have reverberations around the world tonight. So to confirm, Donald Trump, according to the Associated Press, is the new president of the United States. Mm -hmm. Wow. I've got Andrew Perez and Joey Cepeda, both of you very, very happy. Let me start Absolutely. with you first, Ivan, Andrew. Uh, how, how amazing was tonight it's, for you? It's unbelievable. I mean, nobody expected him when uh, the media had him down 20 points in the beginning. And then uh, yesterday, all of a sudden, he's up by five. And today, we have a victory. Um, and for you, Joey, what was the atmosphere in the, like, in the ballroom for you? Historic. It was amazing being surrounded by people who were all very happy to see Donald Trump, uh, our next president, and the world is probably more than ever has proof that never believe the polls. We're experiencing what you guys experienced with Brexit. And all the polls said we're, he was not going to win, but we knew there was going to be a huge silent minority who were going to vote for Trump. They just weren't vocal. Those polls were proved wrong. Again, I notice you very visibly here got Absolutely. your Hispanics for Trump, and you were telling me that you live in the south of Texas. Right, south Texas, on the near border. Near the border area. No, we're on the border. So what do you think about his immigration policy, to which you've been very divisive? It, it, I think it's great. I mean, we have uh, a border that is being uh, crossed every day, and, and we need to put into it. I mean, I, they don't, the media, uh, the news isn't, you know, announce what's going on. They kind of keep it hush hush, mm -hmm. but it's a problem, and we need to fix it. And the plan for the wall for Mexico to to pay for that? Do you think that's a reality? When Trump says Mexico's going to pay for the wall, 
it's not literally Mexico's going to write a check. He has, and on his, on, if you go to his policies, he has laid out ways how things will be paid, whether increase, increasing the bridge crossing fees, the fees of money being sent to Mexico on transactions. It'll be done. It'll be done. Uh, our family personally was affected. Our Mexican relatives in Mexico were forced by cartels to start coming to America and start working for them as private investigators. And when they were visiting our America, McAllen, Texas, our town, we had no idea that they were under duress. They were like, anyways, long story short, we've witnessed the first problem hand. with firsthand. And then our family, personal level, our family was actually affected by the Justice Department uh, doing a, basically making the FBI lie on our father's interview and everything. But, so. but is there any worry for you that uh, he's been very divisive, that he may not be able no, to be not his presidential? All. I mean, they, they just take him, uh, since he's not a politician, he kind of says it like it is, and people don't like that. Fantastic. Well, Andrew and Joey, thank you very much for your time today. A huge win for Donald Trump, and as you can see, his supporters are very, very pleased. The Russian president, Vladimir Putin, has also contacted Trump, yeah. we think, via telegram to congratulate him. be a very interesting relationship, that, for the world. Yes. Trump has obviously been quite conciliatory about Putin in public. Hillary Clinton was notably very hostile towards yeah. Putin. I don't think it's such a bad thing if the presidents of Russia and America get on. Jerry Springer, is it a bad thing? No, if Russia, the two countries have a cordial relationship? No, they've worked out a deal. Russia's going to be our 51st state. <laughs> and, I, and I think that's just going to be... You know what? I've got no problem if they want to be friendly until, you know, it's unfriendly. That's far worse. So good luck to the pair of them. From uh, Washington that is slowly uh, coming to terms with what has been an absolute shock, I think, for people here. Uh, I don't think anybody really expected it. I have with me two uh, guests. I have Troy McCurry, who is a constitutional expert, an election lawyer, and Reggie Love, who we've had on the programme in London too, uh, who is a close friend of President Barack Obama's. Um, we, we've just heard the president-elect, Donald Trump, give quite a conciliatory uh, speech about bringing unity. Um, but this has got to be a crushing blow to Barack Obama, who uh, campaigned so hard for Hillary and talked about his legacy and don't let it go. Uh, no, I think, you know, uh, the president uh, did campaign uh, very hard on behalf of Hillary Clinton, and I think the hope was you know, people would have been excited to turn out, but unfortunately it didn't seem like we got uh, nearly the numbers uh, in turnout that he did in 2012 and in, in 2008. I have a hard time seeing them spending tons of money on a wall that, for all intents and purposes, every expert said won't actually do anything. It's, 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 it's still somewhat of an absurd concept, but the cost to do something like that would just be skyrocket. I mean, and, it would skyrocket the deficit. And so. what, I, what I found most interesting, in a way, out of everything he just said in his very first speech there, was when he said, look, there are many of you who didn't support me, and I think he was talking to Republicans, senior Republicans, but I am reaching out to you to help me do this and that's quite interesting that it's, he's almost he's aware he the president doesn't have complete authority he does but he needs support from the party well sure and I think you've seen throughout this campaign there have been moments in time where Donald Trump acted presidential they may have been small and fleeting and they've kind of dissipated quickly but I think what you saw tonight was a hint of one of those moments. The question now is, is how long does that last? Richard you're in New York not my president just one other chance has been ringing out this evening that's right, Ben, and it was ringing out until after midnight here. It's 2 o'clock in the morning now, and at about half past 12, police announced they were going to start arresting people if they didn't move on and clear the pavement. That's been largely successful here in New York City, uh, not so over on the West Coast. Currently in Oakland, we're told there is real violence and trouble on the streets there, uh, fires being started, windows being smashed. Down in Los Angeles, in Southern California, a highway currently being blocked by protesters who are angered that Donald Trump has been elected as president. I mean, here in New York City, they were prepared for trouble. In fact, these trucks parked outside of Trump Tower, Donald Trump's home, full of sand, were told to protect the building from car bombs. But they weren't ready, it seems, for thousands of people, perhaps more than 10,000 people, marching through the streets last night to vent their anger. Not my president! After the shock came the anger. Manhattan at rush hour, traffic at a standstill, the streets swamped with protesters. We're setting in motion what will be the first of four years of constant protest demonstration. All of us here in New York and the country all around the world, we know it's not right. He's not going to be our president. He's insulted Muslims, he's insulted Mexicans, he's insulted every marginalized group. Well, until he gets the keys to the Oval Office, this is Donald Trump's home here on Fifth Avenue. 
and his neighbours here in New York City are telling him very strongly that he really isn't welcome. And from democratic-leaning cities across America came the same message.